Diego, California, New England, and San Diego Soccer is brought to you on your sports leader by the Diet Center, the natural way to lose weight. By Godfather's Pizza for the pizza you can't refuse. By American Travel, the world of delight. By V Bank, the Kansas State Bank and Trust Company. By Midway Auto Supply, if we don't have it, we'll get it. By the sports team for the store that has yes. By the University Bank of Wichita, the one bank for all your financial needs. And by Air Midwest, the only way to fly. The starting lineup. Here's Steve Shaw. For the Wichita Wings in goal will be Mike Dowler. The defenders will be Kim Runtead and Greg Willen. The midfielders, Norman Piper and Jordan Christensen and Andy Chapman, the starting forward. For the San Diego Soccer, Don Mayer, of course, in goal. Julie B. Osdania, Dean Wilrich. And we'll try to get those two defenders in just a moment. The two defenders are, of course, Gary Collier and Nico Roman. Wings control the ball. On the far boards, if you're watching along on television, as Kim Rumpet dumps it into the near corner. It's Andy Chapman taking it, Roman on his back, circling around to his left, trying to get the ball to the wing. It's controlled by Piper. Piper works to the corner. Collier giving him shadow. Now we have the first whistle of the game called by Gino DiPolito. He, along with Anatol Popovich, are the two extra men on the floor. Wings will have the ball in from the near corner. Gino wants the spot. More towards the corner, and he finally gets it with no cooperation from Norman Piper. Christensen sends it towards the crease. Andy Chapman is there, but it's knocked out of there by Will Rich, and here comes Julie V. Kim Rutbed meets him right at the red line. Ball's knocked away, but it's controlled by Will Rich. Ahead to the red line, into the corner for Julie V. His shot is knocked away. The follow just wide to the right. Now the follow by Will Rich is speared out of there on a good defensive play by Mike Gower. The follow in by Kaz Dania. Glances in front of the net. He was trying to find Julie V, but it's knocked out of there, and the wings on the far boards come on the attack. But San Diego comes out with that confidence, Steve, that typifies this team so much and gets the first good flurry in front of the wings net. Andy Chapman now working to the left of Alan Mayer. Sends the ball back to the red line. Gino DiPolito making a token effort to avoid it. Kim Rutbed receives it. Goes across pitch for Norman Piper. It's once deflected, but Norman receives it. Goes to the top of the arc for Kim Rutbed. Mayer is out of net. Kim all alone on the weak side. Shot coming in. Just missed in there by Norman Piper. It was last deflected, however, by Alan Mayer or Gary Collier. And so it'll be a corner kick coming to the left or right of goalkeeper Alan Mayer. 13.43 remaining in the first period. No score from San Diego. Wichita, good opportunity there. They didn't act quite quick enough to take advantage of it, though, I'm afraid. Christensen off the spot of Popovich. Loops it in the air for Runfed. His full volley shot a little too high to handle. And the ball skips up into the stand. It's retrieved by a fan. Dumped back onto the floor. He comes boundingly, bounding to the red line. And with 13.40 remaining, San Diego will put the ball back into play. Both teams now making substitution. Wichita looks like they're going to play very conservative defensively right off the bat. And I think they just want to keep from making mistakes defensively real early in the game. They don't want to give San Diego anything and uh, take their offensive chances when they get them. San Diego dressed in blue with yellow trim. The wings, of course, in their white unis. Emblematic, of course, of the fact they're on the road. San Diego, California, to be exact. Bruce Earl and Steve Schott with all the play-by-play -play on your sports leader. No score, first period of action. Greg Willen harassing Julie V a little too enthusiastically as the push is called against Greg. Now Gino's having a word with them. Interesting, the other night, these two players, uh, Greg Wellen had two fouls against him. Julie B, seven fouls against him in the game the other night. Into the corner it goes for Lawrence Hill. Controlled out of there by Fernandez. Finally, the top of the arch. Jeff Bourne gets his foot on it. And here come the wings on the attack, but the ball is knocked away from the back door by Fernandez. So Bourne can only watch as the ball skips into the foot. Of Eric Geyer, now ahead for Fernandez on the right wing, sends it off the boards in front for Julie V, trying to find the handle, is unsuccessful, Omar Gomez comes over to knock it away, and he'll bring the ball up the floor himself, avoids three blue shirts up along the right-hand side, he boots it into the San Diego pitch, Omar had a nice break going, but he tried to do it all himself, he had people breaking free, back down the left wing. San Diego really converges on Omar Gomez. I think they picked him as the player they need to really mark the closest for the Wichita Wings as he's been effective in the playoffs. And they shut him down pretty well the other night. He certainly is the key for the Wings. Guy Newman will put the ball into play directly in front of the San Diego bench. No score. 12.54 remaining in the first period. Omar Gomez marking him. Ball comes into the middle. Fernandez has it. Frank Rasmussen hustling after Vidal, who dumps it back for Alan Mayer. The league's most valuable player dumps it to his immediate right. As he's trying
trying to find Sari. He's successful. Now the ball is into the attack zone. Controlled by Adi Coker. Centering pass. Sari has it. Working man-to-man -man against Jeff Bourne. Makes an empty move to his left. Fires. It's just wide. And Bourne gets the rebound. Back for Pear Runfett. Runfett with Lauren Hilts on him. Hilts just takes the ball away. But a little too aggressively is pushing is the call. Pear Runfett doing a good job of using his body to protect the ball on that one. But uh, <laughs> Douglas just shoved him. Omar Gomez takes the ball into play. Now it's John Cutbush to the left of center. Now working it back towards the middle for Big Pear on bet. Off to his right, Omar Gomez controls in the midfield, looping it high towards the corner. It comes bounding off the board for John Cutbush. Cut knew it. He touched it with his hand, and the handball was called. It's even a little bit late. Goes back for San Diego, and Guy Newman has it to the right of Alan Mayer. Now it's gifted across the mouth of the goal. It's controlled there by Surrey. Paul Morey, as he's known least on the roster. Sari as he goes via his Brazilian name. 11.55 remaining as they dump into the attack zone. Wings get it back. Both teams have had a couple good flurries, but other than that, there hasn't been anything interesting. Now the wings break in. Chapman fires. Just glanced out of there by Alan Mayer as he came in on the right wing. Wings hustling after trying to get a rebound opportunity, but Mayer snuffs it out again and sends it with his distribution to mid floor. Dania has the ball knocked away on a good defensive play by Pear Rutfed, who knocks it ahead for Chapman. Back for Pear. Pear sends a blaster just wide. Piper with the follow, trying to get it in front to Chapman, but Mayer comes out to make the play and bowls it off to his right. It's controlled by Namdar on the four board. Three lines ahead on the fly. It goes for Dania. Man to man against Pear Rutfed. The two battle for it. Pear gets his foot off on it. The ball comes in off the shot by Namdar. Blocked out of there. Back into the corner for Christensen, trying to get it up the far board for Chapman. He does it twice and finally stolen by Namdar. Namdar driving in, makes a nice move to get by Christensen all the way to the corner. Pear Rutfett comes over, ball still free. Cutbush comes in to knock it away and it's finally picked up by Mike Dowler. Christensen appeared to give up on the ball a little bit and if it wasn't for John Cutbush and Pear Rutfett, Lord knows what would have happened. Well, one thing Jorgen does on defense, uh, when he stops playing on defense, he seems to be waiting for that ball to spurt out of there and get an offensive thrust going. Sometimes it works magnificently, it looks like a genius. Sometimes when the other team uh, keeps control, then it appears he's just not trying to do anything, but he's waiting out there hoping the ball is spurred out and he can get an offensive thrust going. Wings bring it into the attack zone, we'll lose it, and then get it right back. Pair run fed at the red line, in for Christensen. Christensen's got an open avenue. Jurgen driving in, shot coming. Mayer makes the save off a deflection by Guy Newman, who has some unkind words for Julie B, who takes the fast break the other way, but Kim Rutfed comes in to knock it away. Good job by Kim on that one. Very aggressive tackle. And V's the type that'll break that one wide open. Piper leaves it off for Kim in the middle, who goes 24 feet in front of the net. Sandy Chapman, Chapman for Runfed, but the ball is knocked away nicely by Hilkes, who controls it to the right of Mayer in the far corner. Hilkes with the ball, right in front of the net. Now moving to his left, making the play, trying to get between Runfed and Piper is unsuccessful. Norman makes the play. Kim brings it on the right wing for Chapman. Chapman takes it off the board. He goes down. Newman is going to get called for the trip. Gino DiPolito, one of the league's most consistent officials. It's just a question of whether you're going to get him consistently good or consistently bad. San Diego has only four minutes in penalties in their three playoff games so far. Wichita only had, had the only penalties in the game the other night, too. These are probably two of the cleanest clubs in the league when they're playing each other at any rate because they play a very uh, skillful brand of soccer and not a real physical one. Ball be put into play. Christensen off the board. Chapman high in the air to make the kick from his side. He's unable to do so. As the ball is knocked out of there, it'll be a goal kick coming for Alan Mayer. 9.42, we are scoreless in the first period of action. Bruce Ertl and Steve Shot on the road in San Diego. Wing trail in the best of five series, one game to nothing. And Hilt brings it in shot from the middle from Nico Roman. Glances wide. Ball still in the wing's defensive end. As Wilrich knocks it away from Norman Piper, but he used his elbow to do so, and he stalls for the push. Wings will get it back. Good call by Gino, as Norman was definitely almost had his head, take off, head taken off there. And the Wings will get it back in their own defensive third. Christensen slowly ambling the ball up towards the defensive red line, sends a diagonal pass into the midfield for Piper. One touch back to Runfett. Kim with the ball, sends it to his left for Greg Willen. One thing is for sure, if Willen's on the floor, so is Julie V. Greg sends it towards the corner. Trying to get it to Andy Chapman, but played off the ball nicely by Collier. Chapman trying to regain possession. He's finally called for the push. Now Popovich is hot because he blew the whistle and he turned and fired. Fans don't like it either. They thought it was Bush. And if Andy didn't hear the whistle, it was fine. If he did, then perhaps it was. 
two remaining as San Diego has it in the midfield. Here's a jump. Galler comes out to knock it away up over the plexiglass into the stand. Fans clamoring for two, but Collier will put the ball down just inside the red line on the far board. I'll tell you, San Diego likes to take that quick spot as Collier right there trying to get the ball down very quickly and get a shot uh, pass off. B sends it to the corner for Gene Wilrich. Wilrich with the ball against Kim Rutbed. Working on the far board, Kim comes over, gives them a shoulder, and it works as the wings get it, at least for the moment. Now Christensen with a nice little pass up the board for Runfed. Runfed into the middle for Piper. He sends it up across the red line into the midfield, right in front of the wings bench. It's Jeff Bourne coming across the red line into the attack zone now to the right wing. Ball's knocked away on a good defensive play by Cosdania. Quickly, San Diego comes back on the attack. Willen all over Julie V. The two battling for it. Willen knocks it back into the defensive end. But San Diego retrieves. Now they come into the attack. V working with Greg Willen. All sorts of pushing and shoving going on. That's a matchup you really should be watching if you're watching along on KSNW. Wings went out again this time as they come into the midfield. Great job by Greg Willen neutralizing V, at least to this point in the game. Series, quite frankly. Christensen now working along the red line. Far boards. Back in the middle for Willen. He chips it ahead 22 feet for Bourne, who heads it up towards the goal and is unable to make the play and the game is starting off just as it pretty much did the other night, Steve. Steve team really getting a great deal of opportunities to score in the contest. Well, Wichita playing a very concerted defense. I think both these teams are going to test each other out. A mistake will probably lead to the first goal. That might have been one right there. Rasmussen loses it away needlessly at the red line to cause Dania, but the Wings get it back. And now pulls it off along to his left-hand side. John Cutbush control. Into the middle for Pear Runfett. Excuse me. So many times with the score tied or early in the game, it is a mistake that leads to that tie-breaking goal. As the teams are playing at their utmost with the score tied. Omar Gomez takes it off the boards. Drives it towards the net, but Mayer makes the play off a little defensive help from Surrey. Pear Runfit, however, steals the distribution, comes back to the top of the arc, working all the way towards the corner, being marked in there by Hilkes. Hilkes knocks it away for Alan Mayer. Mayer bowls it off to his left. On the fly is Eric Geyer at midfield. The anticipation picks up as the ball is cut diagonally towards the corner for Vidal Fernandez, but Rasmussen came over to just knock it away. Good play by playing Frank Rasmussen. He leaves it off for Pear Runfit, who in turn goes for Cutbush in front of Mike Dowler. He sends it off to his immediate left for Omar Gomez as the Wings and the Sox with 6.35 remaining in the first period are still scoreless. The Wings are playing so conservatively defensively they're really not getting many fast break opportunities which may be an area that this uh, San Diego club is vulnerable on as uh, just like a lot of great offensive teams, their defenders like to go forward. I think if the Wings could ever break out of it, but Wichita also the type of team that early in the game they don't want to get caught uh, going too far forward to their defenders so it's pretty much been an end-to-end -end game. Three-line pass against Wichita. The ball is placed back on the red line. Vidal Fernandez controlling it towards the far side of the field. Now to the top of the arc, working against Pear Runfed. Drifting to his left. Now makes a nice move to get free to his right. Sends it that way. And it's controlled by Seri. Seri working against Omar Gomez. Makes a nice move to the top of the arc. Castania has it. Give and go. Seri shot coming. Back out of there on a great defensive play. The follow. It's hitting just wide. And it comes bounding Dax down around into the far near corner where the wings were able to get it out. Good patient play from Kaz Dania who set up what should have been a sure goal. A great pass. I'm passing right in the thick of traffic. Well, Wichita rises to the occasion to some degree. And to some degree, San Diego just failed to finish on that one as it very easily could have been a goal. They had penetrated the wing's defense. Should have been probably, but nonetheless, it's still double goose eggs at 538. First period of action, wings controlling it. Jurgen Christensen on a fast break ahead for Norman Piper, breaking in one-on-one. -on -one. Piper with the shot. Mayer saying Piper with the rebound. Gets the handball called against us. Great play by Alan Mayer, and that is why he is most valuable player. Situation like that, of course, Norman Piper, you got to curse him if he doesn't take the quick shot. But if he just had a man over there a little bit quicker to the left, he had Mayer way out of net. And if Andy Chapman could have gotten down there, I think there'd been a sure goal for the Wichita Wings. 5.22 remaining in San Diego. Dodges the bullet for now. Thanks to the defense of Alan Mayer. Shots on Amdar in the midfield for Julie V. Working man-to-man -man against Christensen. Cutbush comes out to knock it away. Runfit heads it immediately to his right. Norman Piper controlling it. At the midfield, across the red line into the attack zone, Kim Runfit takes it. 
off a deflection of Andy Chapman, works to the right wing, turns and fires, and Roman deflected off his back into the stand. Five minutes remain exactly in the first period, still no score. Wings will put it into play halfway between the corner kick spot and the red line along the near side. Pretty good crowd on hand tonight. I guess about uh, maybe 500 empty seats here. They must be uh, well over the 12,000 mark. A little bit bigger than the crowd on uh, Thursday night. Front bed at the top of the arc. Has his shot blocked by Roman. Then nearly has his own head taken off on the rebound. Steve and I are situated exactly behind the goal of Mike Dowler. So it's an interesting angle that we are calling this ball game from. Greg Willen with the ball at midfield, has to dump it back for Mike Dowler, who stops with his right foot, spins it out in front of him. Now with the left foot, sweeps it ahead for Norman Piper at the red line, has troubles, troubles controlling it, finally gets it off for Christensen. Now they work it back around the defensive horn for Kim Runstead, left wing, it's Greg Willen. Willen slowly bringing the ball in the midfield. He works it off to his right, Norman Piper controlling, four and a half minutes remaining. Piper dumps it towards the corner as the wings look for an opportunity to ex Substitute. Now to the top of the arc. Christensen leaves it off for Kim Runtbed. Back to the left-hand corner. Christensen is there. Jurgen leaves it off for Kim. Right side, Chapman fires and scores, and the Wings lead it one to nothing. Beautiful passing in there by Andy Chapman, Jurgen Christensen, and Kim Runtbed, and the Wings have taken the initial lead one to nothing. 4:09 remaining in the first period, and the Wings remember have a very good record indeed when scoring the first goal. In fact, 18 and three. So crucial is that first goal. Wichita has only had to lead for a total of six minutes in five games against these San Diego Sockers. It's never lasted very long. Five minutes in one game, two minutes in another. Uh, less than five and less than two. And uh, very important for Wichita to get that first goal. A beautiful play. Nice pass from Kim to Andy Chapman. And it's all set up by Jorgen Christian. So Andy gets his third goal in two nights out here. Now Omar Gomez brings it in across the red line. Omar. Driving, trying to thread the needle, driving in towards the top of the arc, but it's knocked away. Alan Mayer distributes immediately to his right. Gene Wilrich with a heavily wrapped right thigh drives it up to mid floor, but Jeff Bourne comes in to knock it away. And the Wings will get it right back. They wanted an obstruction called here in San Diego. They did not get it. Frank Rasmussen with a poor pass ahead for Jeff Bourne is easily intercepted by Mayer. And with 3.32 remaining, and the Wings leading 1-0, Gene Wilrich comes back on the O. Across the red line, Rasmussen steps in front, makes the play, hustles back towards the middle, sending it for Omar Gomez, working the weave in front of the net. Frank hustling after it. He sent to the floor on a good aggressive check by Collier, who dumps it back to the red line. Wilrich to the top of the arc, and Julie V. Willen is all over him. V is holding him in there, and he is going to get called for it, and it's a good one indeed. Julie V grabs Greg Willen's jersey, and Greg is definitely motioning to Julie V exactly what he thought of that ploy. Waving him away, and uh, Greg Willen getting the best of Julie V, I think, emotionally out there, and he's forcing V to make some mistakes out of frustration. Wings on the attack. Omar Gomez directly in front of the Wichita bench at midfield. Wings looking to extend the one to nothing lead. Bear Runfett, middle of the floor, left wing. Frank Rasmussen, they're just inside the red line, working to the top of the arc, now to the left wing, sends it off for Pear Runfett, man-to-man -man against Lawrence Hilt. Brooks it off on a weave, or at least fakes it that way. Rasmussen runs by him, now Willen gets it back at the red line. To the top of the arc for Jeff Bourne, who's pushed by Nico Roman. And the call goes against Jeff Bourne. Bad call, real bad call. Gotta disagree with that one. 2.42 remaining, one to nothing, Wayne Bladen, San Diego come on the attack. Into the corner. Roman battling against Pear Runfett. Pear is called for the push. Ball be put into play. Off the dead ball situation to the immediate left of goalkeeper Mike Dowler at a pretty good angle for San Diego's hopes. Willen, man to man with Julie B as he has been throughout the whole series. Watch out for Dania here. Omar Gomez marking him, but he's open on the right side. B goes all the way to the corner for Kaz Dania. Goes high in the air to try to knock it away from Omar Gomez. May have taken a bit of his nose off with it. And the dangerous play is called, so the Wings will get it to the right of goalkeeper Mike Dowler. 2.30 remaining in a first period that has seen the Wings bolt to a 1 0 lead. You've seen the movie Victory with uh, Sylvester Stallone. You've seen Kaz Daney in films. He was one of the Allied players. I find that a little interesting myself. Uh, Kaz wouldn't be with the Allies if he was in World War II, but he is in the film Victory. Omar Gomez at the midfield circle, breaking it uncontested at the red line, left wing for Jeff Bourne, tried to give and go, but Collier knocked it away. Good run by Omar Gomez, who now follows the ball into the corner, and it's off Popovich battling for it, along with the two players, couldn't get out of the way, and now the holding is called against Omar Gomez. Omar hustles.
Russell's off the floor. Christensen comes back on. 2.08 remaining now in the period, and San Diego controls it in the midfield. Fernandez with the ball across the midfield, stripe to the red line, leaves it off for Sari with his right foot. He brings the ball into the attack zone, stops. Now working man-to-man -man against Jeff Bourne. Takes to his right, now loops it off to the left. Julie V takes it in the near corner. Willen on him again. V drives through, through, and the hold is called against Greg Willen, and that's about all he could do because I'll tell you right now, Julie V made a move on him and a spin that left him a little dumbfounded and in his track. So Greg makes a good defensive play, keeping Julie V from going any further because he was, quite frankly, beaten badly on the play. Now the shot comes in from Collier off the pass from Julie V, and the ball is dumped back to the red line. Actually, more than anything, that shows seasoning on the part of Greg. Greg Willen. Good kick save on Mike Dollar in that last shot by San Diego. They had a good one, got it off hard. Mike kicked it away. Per Unfit retrieves it now. At the top of his own arc, left wing for Christensen, back towards the middle of the field. Greg Willen controls a minute 25 remaining. Willen, two lines ahead into the attack zone. Andy Chapman working on the right wing, has the ball knocked away by Collier. Gania comes in to give some help, and Collier has to retrieve it in the near corner, sending it back for Alan Mayer. Wings need to keep up the intensity here until the quarter break. San Diego's going to try and pressure forward to even the score before the clock runs out. Hernandez back for Surrey at the midfield. Across the midfield circle for big Eric Geyer. Geyer into the corner, working against Andy Chapman. Sends a shot to Downer, and he plucks it out of the air, making a good play. And he'll pull it off to his left for Andy Chapman. Now back for Dowler in front of his own net with a right foot, stubs it ahead. Christensen takes it at the midfield circle. Jurgen working into the red line. Leaves it off back door for Norman Piper. Piper sends it right wing. Kim Runfit stops it with his right foot, trying to shuttle it ahead for Andy Chapman, but Andy ran in behind the ball. And with 35 seconds left, San Diego comes back on the O. At the midfield stripe, near boards, it's controlled by Terry. He avoids the tackle of Christensen, driving in free. Right wing, it's controlled by Dania. Dania fires, Dower saves, and the ball goes careening back into the corner. Andy Chapman gets the quick foul, but pass. At midfield, he drives in. Andy drives to the top of the arc, working to the right wing, fires, and the shot is just blocked by Eric Geyer. That was almost laughable as big Eric just snuffed out Andy's opportunity with ease. San Diego coming back quickly in the waning seconds. Namdar with a blast from the top of the arc. Two seconds, one, and that's going to be it. The buzzer has sounded in the first period is history, and how about it, folks? The Wichita Wings lead the San Diego Stockers at the end of 15 minutes by a score of one to nothing. of action. The Wichita Wings lead the San Diego Stockers by a score of one to nothing. You're listening to Wings Soccer Action on your Voice of the Wings, KFH Wichita. Bruce Hurdle and Steve Schott. Mike Side, Steve gives us a recap, short and sweet, in that first period. For the first time ever against the San Diego Stockers, the Wings scored the first goal. Andy Chapman scoring his fifth goal of the playoff. Jim Rutbett on the assist, and the whole thing was set up by a great pass from Jordan Christensen. That one came 10.51 into the first period. Can tell you that Chapman's 22nd goal in playoff history as he leads the wings by uh, about 10 goals in playoff goals. And uh, he also should... Uh, should the lead hold up for the Wichita Wings, uh, could set an MIS record for game-winning goals as Steve Jungle holds the record at five. Andy Chapman has four career game-winning goals. And, uh, of course, if the Wings should never lose the lead tonight, then that would be the one right there. The Wichita Wings in past games against the Stockers have trailed three to nothing, two to nothing, five to nothing, five to one, and four to one. It's good to see the Wings ahead one to nothing for a change. Teams change direction. San Diego controls to open the second half. Julie V driving in against Norman Piper, but Norman gets his foot on it, has the handle. Now it's back for Kim Rothbed. He sends it across the mouth of the goal for Greg Willen. He gives away to Jurgen Christensen, who finally gets it back to Mike Dowler, which is what they wanted to do all along. Ahead for Andy Chapman, one touch Christensen, bringing the ball up the middle of the floor, is met by Wilrich, and has to dump it back into the defensive third to avoid the oncoming pressure. Kim Rothbed. Works it off to the right of Dowler to Greg Willen. One touch ahead for Chapman. Right side. It's controlled by Piper. Sends it back towards the middle and beyond. Jurgen Christensen sends it high in the air towards the corner. Comes bounding off the plexiglass. Chapman battling for it, but the ball is centered back to Alan Mayer on an aggressive play by Lauren Tilkas. With 14 minutes remaining in the first half of action, San Diego comes on the attack. Tilkas driving in against Kim Ronfett, but Kim beats him to the ball, and he dumps it back to Mike Downer. Mike, looking to spark the fast break, brings it up for Jurgen Christensen, centering pass for Greg Willen. Willen, with a left foot, sends it back for Norman Piper. Now it's Kim Ronfett at the midfield circle. The rocket comes across the red line, man-to-man -man against Guy Newman. Working it in, sends it off 
for Norman Piper. Piper across the top of the arc, near side Christensen, in for Chapman, but Roman just played him off the ball, and Andy has not been able to score goals against this club with his back to the net. Now quickly, San Diego on the attack, shot coming, and it glances wide to the right off the shot by Gene Wilrich, who's hustling to get it back, but Willem plays him off the ball, and it's controlled by Kim Rutbed, who opts for Mike Dowler. Dowler off to his right. It's controlled by Christensen. The wing's slowing it down a little bit. Now 13 minutes, 12 seconds remain in the period. Christensen breaking the seam, coming up the middle. Finds Frank Rasmussen to his right. He goes across the pitch for Kim Rutbed. The Rocket driving to the red line, works it in. It's deflected away by Cos Dania, but Chapman is able to control. Now we have a whistle on the play. A trip is called against Dania, a little after the fact. But the Wings will have the ball nonetheless, just about center at the red line. I'm not sure if that was a good call at all or not. As Kim Rutbed hit the ball, he went down. I didn't quite see how Dania could have done the tripping. I think Kim just stumbled. Rasmussen comes in off a break from Chapman, gets it to the top of the arc. He had a shot deflected. Now Willen controls, and the ball is knocked back to midfield, and Omar Gomez works it off to his left. Ball is centered in for Andy Chapman, but Newman beats Chapman to the corner, and the ball is San Diego. Rumpet with a half-hearted tackle of Vidal Fernandez knocks the ball away, but San Diego maintains possession just to the right of Alan Mayer. Now up the floor goes Siri. Siri to midfield. Siri to the... Red line into the attack zone. Driving in man to man against Rasmussen. Shoots and it was just wide. Follow Dania. Dowler saves. Dania's rebound in the stand. But I'll tell you, a defensive letdown led to a wide open chance for Mr. Siri to put the ball just to the right of goal. And Mike Dowler, that is where it cut out for him, finally rose up to snuff out that San Diego effort. No time for Wichita to get any lax on defense. They've got the lead for a change against San Diego. And if they can keep from making defensive mistakes, the longer they can hold off the Sockers from scoring, the better their chances, of course. Incidentally, the Wings had nine shots in the first quarter. They only had 14 shots in that first playoff game against the Sockers, an MISL low record for the playoffs all time. They lead it in this one one to nothing, but they'll lose possession as Frank Rasmussen booted it up into the stand. Frank has made some questionable offensive passes out there, but he has certainly been a gem defensively in this ball game, at least to this point. Frank Rasmussen, a great hustler out on the field. When he makes a mistake, he almost always tries to make up for it by going after that loose ball. And more often than not, I think he does make up for his mistake when he does it. Agreed. He is one that is prone to atonement. As another violation is called against Greg Willen, Fernandez will put the ball in forward midfield. Now it's Collier across the red line to the top of the arc, finding Dania. Dania is free. Dania driving in. Shot coming. Dowler comes out to knock it away. Dania gets it back. Good job by Mike Dowler as he grew, grew impatient in the net. Now driving in again is Dania and Coker. Cause has it in the corner. Leaves it off for Fernandez. Wings can't clear the zone. Fernandez to the top of the arc for Nico Roman. Right side. It goes Gary Collier. Trying to get the man in front. That's Dania. He turns and fires, but Willen blocked the shot. And Dania is called for the hold anyway. When actually, probably should have gone against Greg. But Greg blocked the shot and what was a sure goal that wouldn't have counted anyway after the holding violation. We get really a much better view here than our normal midfield line on some of these fouls uh, with the back to the net. And in that case, one of those that I, you've seen a lot of times with Andy Chapman and a defender, the defender clutching from behind, the forward responding, and the forward gets called for it so many times. And Gino DiPolito had the view from the uh, far side. I don't think he could see Greg in there, who did a good job on defense, but uh, I think the holding was on Greg's part. Indeed it was, but the Wings get a break. 11-16 remaining in the half. They lead it one to nothing. But San Diego has picked up the offensive pressure. Wings need to counter. They'll try to do so now at the red line. Fair Rutbed driving in. It's played off the ball by Wilrich, and Wilrich is called for the push. Gino DiPolito is definitely drawing the ire of the San Diego fans. First quarter, the Wings were called for eight fouls. San Diego just for six. I would have guessed the other way around. But indeed, the referees have called more against the Wings. Jeff Bourne at the top of the arc. Works it off to his right. John Cutt pushed back into the middle slowly for Pair on fed. Pair working against Adi Coker, the former New York Arrow. Now it's Jeff Bourne on the left wing. Bourne trying to go to the top of the arc. Coker touched it with his hand. No call on the play. Omar Gomez has it at the red line. Now back for Norman Piper. John Cutt pushes the wings, working in their own defensive or in their own midfield. Controlled by Gomez. Back for Cutbush on the right side. Cutbush diagonally 
The jump board in the middle, back for cut. Wings are slowing it down, taking the air out of the ball a little bit, and it's not exactly very popular with the fans. Now cut push, drops it two lines ahead, plunking it towards the corner. Jeff Bourne receives it. Now the pass is intercepted. And San Diego comes on the attack. Wings are standing around arguing. Call your breaks into the attack zone. Namdar goes back to the corner for Julie V. Perron said goes over to defend him. Perron fit against V, goes down. V drives free. Namdar, weak side, and he scores. He went by Bear Runfed. Namdar was free on the weak side. Wings did not cover it well defensively, and the lead has vanquished. 10.07 remaining in the first half of action, and the Wings are beaten on a defensive letdown. You can, wing, you can hear the crowd smell blood on that one. It's from the very end of San Diego started their move downfield. They sensed that they had an opening. And indeed, they did. Maybe they sensed that... Greg Willen wasn't the man out there guarding Julie V. Good point. He saw V down there open. There's just always a possibility, a problem, when you have a man-to-man -man system and a specific player assigned to another. But there's going to be times when Greg can't get out and make that substitution quick enough. And in that case, no one really had V covered well enough. And in fact, V went right by the tackle of Fair Runs that Chapman gets it back. His shot just over the crossbar comes bounding out. Mayer now looks for the fast break for Lauren Hilton. Hilkes with the blast wide. V comes in for the rebound, but Willen beats him to the ball, and the Wings get it back in the midfield. Now it's Kim Rothbett with the ball. Diagonally into the midfield, far board, controlled by Chapman. He works to his left to the red line, works it off for Christensen. Jurgen working to the top of the arc, works it off into the corner for Norman Piper. Ball free off the board, but the play is made by San Diego's Lawrence Hilt. He leads it ahead for Fernandez. Here they come on the attack for now on the left wing. Works it off for Eric Guy. Fernandez fires and scores. Two to one, and the floodgates have opened. The wings have got to get things under control as San Diego has gotten the crowd back in the ball game and are now starting to dominate as they have so frequently against this club. The crowd is going crazy. As it would in the Kansas Coliseum with the wings coming from behind. Two quick goals. I'm always amazed at how quickly this game can turn around. Wichita seem to be dominating the flow of play all throughout the first 20 minutes of the game. And in 40, 46 seconds, the San Diego Soccer has taken over the league. And they've dominated the ball game from that 10 4 spot. Julie B comes back. Working man to man against Willen. Willen plays him off the ball, and here comes the wings fast break. Willen into the midfield. Will into the red line. Willrich knocks him off the ball, but Willen goes back to retrieve. Now pushes the head again. Comes to the top of the arc. Left-footed shot. Knocked away by Guy Newman. Willen gets it to the corner. Chapman centering pass. He is trying to find a man there. Nobody was there. Ball's deflected away to the top of the arc. Sherry plays Christensen off the ball, and the obstruction is called. Good play on that one as Sherry just blocked Jorgen pass to the ball and shoved him backwards. You can play the ball, you can't play the man. Christensen will put the ball into play. Intensity has to be 100% against this club. Top of the arc and beyond, and Rothbett sends it up far away and just beyond, up into the nickel seat. It's 8.45 now remains in the first half. That the Wings dominated early, but San Diego has come back to vent their superiority to this point. They lead it 2-1, 8.45 remaining. And intensity is the key. If the Wings maintain defensive intensity, their offense appears to be creating enough opportunities to get the goals to win, but defensively, they have not been tremendous, at least in the last five minutes. A good point. That last goal for San Diego was by Vidal Fernandez, his second of the playoffs. Eric Geyer had the assist at 539. Fernandez has really been effective against the Wings this season. Oh, he really has. He scored the game winner in the 5-4 overtime game back in the Kansas Coliseum in the first game of the season between these two. And since then, has gone on to score quite a few goals against this club. Seven goals and two assists against the Wings. Nico Roman at midfield. Works it off to the left for Gene Willrich. Across the red line he comes. Working against Fair Runfed. He sends a shot off the Big Dane. It's deflected, and the Wings come on the O. Omar Gomez. On the far boards, working man-to-man -man with Adi Coker. Shuttles it ahead for Frank Rasmussen. Back in the middle for Gomez. Gomez back for Rasmussen, but Coker plays him off the ball. Wings are trying to get this a little too fancy, perhaps. Now Alan Mayer looks for the fast break as the fans exhort him on. A good thought there. The only problem, Omar had Jeff Bourne pretty wide open over on the left side, and I just don't think Nor Omar taking that pass could see Jeff out of the corner of his eye. John Cutbush sends Adi Coker to the floor. The push is called, and San Diego has it in the midfield. 
Ed Newman to put it back into play for Nico Roman. He's at his own defensive red line. Now ahead into the midfield. Fernandez breaks into the offensive zone. Working to his right now against Fair Runfit. Has Ade Coker behind him. Gives way for Ade. Circles back around the ball. Hitting for the red line. Centers now for Roman. Roman sends it towards the corner. Guy Newman takes it off the shin. High in the air. Off the plexiglass. Dowler just kind of gives a token effort. And bumps it away. Then has to boot it up into the stand. That's one area of weakness that Mike really has. He does not play the balls particularly well that are coming down from a high angle of descent up against the board. He had a lot of problems with that in St. Louis as well, and certainly anyone that was watching along could see that he had a problem on that ball as well. Well, he's not tall for a goalkeeper, and I think he worries a lot about another player getting up there and trying to head the ball away from him. Fernandez with the ball on the left wing. Working with it there, the fans starting up that support. It makes San Diego such a tough place to play. They've won 15 straight here in the sports arena, and right now, unless the game changes, would win 16. Ball in front of the net. Mike comes out this time with confidence, makes the play. Pulls it up along his left-hand side for Omar Gomez. Omar slowly into the attack zone. Now he picks up the speed. Driving to his right for Pear. Run that Pear's half as an avenue. He drives to the top of the arc. Fires, and Mayer makes the save. Pear with great patience right there made the play, but Mayer was equal to the task as he stuffed out the opportunity. Quickly, on the fast break, comes Ade Coker. Very fleet of foot. Leaves it off for Wilrich. Wilrich drives it off to his left. Ronfed knocks him off the ball. Rasmussen controls at the red line. Makes a nice sweeping play to get it into the middle. The ball's chipped towards the net. Cutbush heads it out of there. And Pear Ronfed will control it off to his left for Omar Gomez. Omar works it towards the Wichita bench. As Bourne goes off, Wichita trying to affect substitutions, as is San Diego. Christensen comes back on as Omar goes off. 6.34 remaining in the first half of action. Wings, after leading one to nothing, give up two quick goals. Now Julie V comes in on a fast break on another, as a poor pass again from Frank Rasmussen to Kim Lundfett. This time was intercepted by Julie V. Frank Rasmussen, of course, is playing in place of Terry Nickel, who is normally the starting midfielder on that line. Terry's been down with the flu for about four days. He's feeling much better now. And uh, no criticism of Frank Atena, but he doesn't seem to be having a real good game tonight. And you wonder whether maybe Coach Roy Turner might consider putting in Terry Nickel back into that lineup. Let's face it, the lineup is used to Nickel in there. Frank, a great player, but he's kind of having an off night on the passing department, and the Wings need that to work against the Stockers. Yeah, he's having a terrible night right now. Christensen dumps it into the attack zone on a high looping shot, but it's touched by the hand of Surrey, and so the Wings will put the ball back into play to the left of goalkeeper Alan Mayer, just off the top of the bar, uh, top of the box. Christensen approaches the ball off the spot of Popovich, takes two steps forward, sends it off to the corner. Kim has to take it off the boards, and he sends it back to the red line, not getting a good shot off it. 6.09 remaining now. Willen tries to send it towards the corner, but Namdar makes a play. Now Cha Cha picking up the pace, comes up the floor himself. He's bringing a fast break into the offensive zone. Right wing all alone is Will Rich. Will Rich beats Piper, fires. He makes the play in front of the net. Dowler jumps out it, and the ball is booted away to the red line. Fans are calling for a handball, but Mike Dowler makes a sensational play. Namdar gets it back, and he hits the post. It comes bounding out, and Kim Huntbett comes up the floor. Great play by Mike Dowler that time. Jim Huntbed now, pierces the midfield. He's on the far boards as the Bluebirds come out in San Diego. He splits the pitch. Leaves it for Christensen. Sends it with a sharp diagonal pass for Chapman. Chapman tried to give and go on his own. Then looked for an obstruction call against Collier. He didn't get it. Amnar brings it up the floor instead. Now it's Collier at the middle of the field. Across the red line, into the attack zone, backing up Kim Huntbett. He drives to his right, sends it off into the corner. It's Wilrich that controls. He goes by, a token effort from Jurgen Christensen. Now the man is free. Shot coming, Huntbett follows it. Here's Hilt from wide open. But Greg Willen comes in to knock it away. As the wings again, not getting good defensive play from the men up front. Five minutes. Hilkes should have scored on that one. Five minutes remain. Now Christensen's played off the ball by Fernandez. Agreed. He should have scored. He had a wide open net. But the Wings, especially with that line that was on, the Chapman Christensen line, not exactly a great defensive line. Norman Piper in there as well. Now look at this. Hilkes breaking in behind everybody. Dower comes out to kick it away. Julie V gets the rebound as the man Hilkes goes down. Willen all over B. The shot comes in from Geyer from inside the red line. Eric sends it off the boards, and Kim Rontfett deflects it away. He has it in the corner and goes ahead for Norman Piper. Now we have a push called against Hilkes to the left of goalkeeper Dowler. But, Steve, you've got to like the way the San Diego club down and being beaten by the Wichita Wings in fairly convincing fashion to a point have really come back to 
to throttle the wings to a certain extent and right now are really controlling the momentum of the contest even though they only lead two to one. Wichita's had good heads up play inside around the goal. Going ahead, he's kept from making San Diego about four to one at this point. Mike yep. Dowler, some good playing goal. Jeff Bourne to the left of Mayer. Working in with two blue shirts. Ball is finally knocked away, and here comes Dyer. He can sense the electricity every time San Diego gets a fast break, and now he's breaking in behind Fair. Rodfed with a shot at the top of the arc, and the ball goes skipping into the set. Eric Gard just playing out, ran uh, Pair Rutbed on that one as he turned Pair around and then got a step on him. Pair Rutbed, one of the most skillful defenders in the league, not one of the fastest defenders in the league. And he needs to give a player a little bit of room because he's not going to outrun too many of them. But he is imposing defensively. Wings coming back on the attack. They only trail by one. They have it at the red line. Into the attack zone, Jeff Bourne. Has the ball just taken away by Newman. Wings really being frustrated right now offensively. They're not getting great opportunities. And San Diego is controlling the momentum of the contest as they come back into the offensive end. But Al Fernandez at the red line. Middle of the floor, works it out to his right for Willis. Wilrich turns it back for Roman, who dumps it into the corner for Fernandez. He has to dump it back to midfield for Roman, who with a left foot plucks it back for Alan Mayer. 3.16 remain now in the first half that has seen San Diego lead 2-1. to one. Mayer with a right foot, works it towards the attack zone, a header by Dania, distributes the ball in the middle, and Pair Unbet sends Ade Coker to the floor. Ade with a quick spot, leaves it off for Fernandez. Fernandez at the top of the arc, shot comes, and Mike Dowler makes the save. Routine save for Mike on that one. Every bit as important as the spectacular ones, however, with 2.54 remaining. Wings come on the O, trying to generate something. Omar Gomez comes in, hits the post, and nobody's there on the weak side as Jeff Bourne gave up on the ball. Sometimes I wonder, the shot sure was there as Gomez hits the post. V now working against Rasmussen. It's again no longer Greg Willen on him. And he creates the opportunity, but the save is made by Dowler off the block of Cutbush. Boy, I'd like to have that one back, Steve. As the ball comes into the attack zone, Mayer dumps it back into the midfield. Pair run bed will retrieve. Golden opportunity. Good shot by Gomez. Just off. Bourne was there for the rebound, but did not go after the ball. He started to and then backed off. Now he drives in. Free left wing. Christensen. Bourne. You're going to have the shot from eight feet. He tried to get fancy and give it to Borny. Now here's the fast break the other way. Wilrich, right wing. Dania, man in the middle. Willen knocks it away and gets the save. Ball will come out to the red line, and Jeff Bourne will control. The wings frustrated by that blown opportunity. Just did not respond defensively. Close call. Piper with a drive from the right wing off the pass of Kim Rutbed. So two times down the floor, save for this last one, the wings have had unbelievable opportunities two that, quite frankly, they should have scored on. They have not been able to do so. Christensen tried to pull the trigger inside to Bourne, and obviously the congestion negated that. And then Gomez hitting the post on the trip previous. Bourne unable to get to the rebound. Kick will come in from the corner. Christensen leaves it in front for Chapman. Piper is there, but Mayer jumps on it. And Alan Mayer, the league's most valuable player, comes out, distributes it to midcourt. Julie V knocks away. Fernandez goes over his back to make it. Christensen on the boards wins the 50-50 ball. Now we have a push call against Julie V and Fernandez. Quickly, the ball is put into play. Runfed leaves it off for Christensen. Jurgen coming to the top of the arc, leaves it off on the weave. Back door for Kim. Kim driving to his right, sends it off the board, sends it back for Norman Piper. Great athletic effort by Kim Runfed just to get the ball back to Norman. Now it's in for Andy Chapman, being pushed and shoved in there by Collier. And Andy is just not doing it, facing, facing the net. He's been fine, but with his back on the net, he has not been. Mandar into the corner, working against Willen. Willen just bulldogging him away. Sari comes over to give help. Greg stands his ground. He gives no quarter and is finally pushed. Greg Willen has just been a tremendous asset for the Wings in these playoffs, of course, all season long. But I'll tell you one thing. Defensively, he stuck it on Julie V, and he's done a good job helping everybody else out as well. If it weren't for a technicality, I think he would really be the best candidate for Rookie of the Year. He's played outdoor soccer professionally in the past year and thus was not a candidate. But Greg Wellen, I really think, is probably the most promising rookie in this league. Agreed. Seri has the ball off a holding violation against Christensen. V and Willen battling for it. Greg misjudged that one a little bit, but he was pushed by V anyway. And the call is made. The two are exchanging a few words now as we look down there. The ball will be put
put back into play in the wings have it. See, Greg Willen is earning Julie V's respect out there. Norman Piper meandering up the floor at the red line into the midfield now for Kim Runtbed. He sends it two lines towards the corner. Andy Chapman gets a bad bounce. Has to watch it come down, and it does so on the other side of the floor. That ball hit the lip there right before the plexiglass and bounced up. Should never have gone out of bounds. If it was a smooth surface there, of course, a lip in every ballpark. Two to one, Sockers lead. 24 seconds now left in the half. Wings need to keep their concentration up as they've been burned by the Sockers late in the period and early in the period on numerous occasions, and San Diego plays the full 60 minutes as well as any team I've seen. Mayer quickly in the attack zone for Will Rich, goes to the corner, shot off the boards, V on the follow, Will and beats him to it, knocks it away, and then sends it back into the midfield. Namdar with a header, keeps it alive. Chapman trying to get to the corner with Collier. Collier just wins out the 50-50 ball, and then Chapman is called for the push. Ball quickly into play, three seconds left. Frank Rasmussen is hounding Namdar, and the period comes to an end. With the wings trailing at the end of 30 minutes, two to one. Chicago and Golden Bay to drop out of the MISL next year and rejoin the NASL indoors. Yeah, I was surprised to see it actually in the paper, but it really didn't mean as much to me, I guess, as everybody else, because I really uh, have seen what's been going on, I guess, the last three or four days on both sides. Really what's happening, Dave, is that there's two individuals or two entities that are positioning themselves and maneuvering uh, to get themselves in the strongest position before they have to sit down and uh, face each other across the table and say, here's what we have to do to get together. Uh, and I think Howard Samuel out of fr Samuel's out of frustration and out of uh, a desire to show the MISL people and Earl Foreman that the NASL was serious, uh, made the statements that he did. We have not received any official uh, notification that we're supposed to pull out a missile. We have not um, got any type of uh, communication from the NASL League office just concerning that. So I really believe, I still believe, that what is going to happen is that within 60 days after the NASL has a league meeting and the 16th, the owners meet on the 16th of May, and then on the 26th of June, uh, the MISL owners are meeting. I think you'll find after those two meetings uh, that we'll be pretty close to some type of arrangement. I think it's possible. I think it's more possible now than I did two weeks ago. Well, when you have your meeting on May the 16th, what will you present to the NASL as a possible solution to all this? Well, I have tried to formulate. Uh, I guess I'm one of the few fellows that is stuck in the middle on this. I've been on both sides. Uh, in fact, it's really been a difficult situation. I think the people in Missile don't feel like I'm Missile. They think I'm in the NASL, and the people in the NASL feel that I'm back over here. I'm kind of like in the MASL, I guess you'd say. <laughs> I don't know what it is. But I've had a unique uh, opportunity to listen to both sides and hear uh, their desires, their problems, their um, uh, what they want and what they don't want. And I think that uh, what I'm going to present there um, will be something that I believe both sides can live with. And I wouldn't like to go into the specifics of it right now, but I think it basically will be a program of cooperation and interleague play that would uh, benefit both sides because neither of us will win if we get into a contest of uh, totally going our own way. It just isn't going to work. The MISL wants to play a 48-game schedule again next year. The NASL has come out and said, no, let's play 30. Well, economically for you, you'd rather play the 48. Absolutely. But at the same time, I can't live with a situation where we have overlapping uh, seasons. Uh, it's very difficult to go into the locker room and say to your uh, players that your off-season this year is next Wednesday and Thursday. Plus, it totally limits your uh, off-season tours overseas, too, when you have two days to do it. I think it can be worked out. I really do. I think that there's a viable way of playing an indoor season and an outdoor season and having the NASL control the outdoor, the MISL control the indoor, and have it done in such a way that they don't conflict. I think that the principal uh, problems can be overcome. and. Uh, uh, if I didn't, I'd be pretty uh, gloomy after what we've seen happen here in San Diego with indoor soccer. I'm sure not about to give it up. 
would you like to see perhaps the MISL have their league the NASL theirs and maybe the champions of both meet uh, sometime in May no I don't because uh, it's impossible for me to be in any, the outdoor with the NASL and the indoor with the MISL if they have an, an in a uh, indoor season that's separate I think that legally I'm supposed to be over there and it would be a very very difficult situation I think it would cause marketing problems I think it would confuse the fans uh, they wouldn't know what was going on it's taken me a year to make them understand what the MISL is all because we were not in the league and it was a very difficult problem having them learn the players and the teams uh, and the concept so I, I'm going to do everything I can to uh, try to get both sides together I really believe, and I'm not just saying this to try to smooth over a problem, uh, I think in 60 days you'll find that the sides have gotten together. If a compromise can't be worked out and you have to make a decision between the leagues, what will you decide to do? I don't know. Uh, it's some, it, it depends on what the two sides are going to do that haven't reached. What kind of indoor season is the NASL going to have? Um, are they going to force me to come back? Would they give me the opportunity if I wanted to to play over here and, and stay over there? Uh, and if it's my problem to have to uh, field two teams because of an overlapping for sure periods of time, uh, so be it if they want that to happen. But I guess really what I've done is concentrated all my efforts in trying to come up with a solution rather than sitting down and saying, if there is no solution, what am I going to do? If I'm forced to sit down and do that at that time, I guess I'll face up to it. All right, Bob, thanks a lot for your comments. We'll be back with more halftime activities in just a moment. Back here at the sports arena in San Diego, California, Bruce Riddle and Steve Schott as we are now again underway in the second half of action. The Wings trailing 2-1. to one. As we have said, the Wings have a tremendous chance in this ball game to win this contest. But they must, of course, maintain consistency in their defense. They must get more of it, especially with this particular club on the floor. Christensen, Chapman, and Piper up front. As Willen throws Ade Coker to the floor at midfield, San Diego controlling as we open the second half of action. These two teams are so close in talent and so similar in style, I really think the team that makes the fewest mistakes is going to win most of the games, and that's been San Diego. Ade Coker sends the ball off the boards wide to the right. A centering effort is perhaps as much as anything. Collier has to retrieve at mid four. Chapman finally wins a 50-50 ball, but it doesn't make any difference. San Diego gets it back anyway. To the top of the arc, Kaz Daniel working against Christensen, makes an empty move, he's free. Piper blocks the shot, and that's just what we were talking about. That's the type of effort they need from these guys in order to be successful defensively. 14-24 remaining in this, the third period of action. Kim Rundbett bringing the ball up the middle of the floor to the top of the midfield circle. Now into the corner for Chapman. Rundbett gets it back free. Shot is just wide. He had an all oh, wide open chance. But Mayer played him, made him play the ball off to the left as he was unable to get his foot on it. Made a great move to the right, and Mayer also went right. And then he had the ball inside on the left, but he couldn't get his foot on it quick enough. Nico Roman with the ball at his own defensive red line. The two lines ahead into the offensive zone. Will Rich runs it, battling for him there. Will Rich breaks free, comes to the top of the arc. Cup push comes in, sliding away. A pass intended for Kazdania. Now it's controlled. Middle of the floor by Gene Wilrich. Man-to-man -man against Kim Runtfeld. Drives him to his right. Kim Boots it off into the corner, and Andy Chapman controls. Wilrich on his back, but Andy hustles up the other way, stops to the midfield, circles back around the ball, then starts his progression again. He comes to the red line, into the attack zone, trying to get Collier back turned around. He does so. Now he's on the left wing. Centers past the top of the arc to the right side for Rasmussen. He stops the ball, places it with his left foot, back for Christensen on the left wing. Christensen driving to the top of the arc. Jurgen comes in, leaves it off along the right-hand wing, trying to find Pear Runtbit, but Roman is called for the push. And the Wings get a break as they would have turned the ball over with 13-12 remaining. Instead, they have the possession just off the upper left-hand corner of the goal box. With Wichita not having a whole lot of luck in its spontaneous offense, it'd be nice to see the Wings get some breaks off these set plays, which they're generally pretty good at, especially with Christensen in the lineup. Jurgen will indeed put the ball down and into play. Goes to the top of the arc pair on fed. A blast, and Mayer makes the save. Rutbed was wide open, and he had a great shot. High into the left net, Mayer is hurt off the shot. That's how hard it was. And he is in some pain. I'll tell you, he's right in my binoculars right now, and he is grimacing. I think he hurt the wrist, which he had injured earlier. This time he makes the play, plucking it out of the air. And as you can see, 
is very slow to use that right hand as the Wings had come in with another good opportunity. Now the fast break. The Polish whiz. Kazdini has the ball knocked away. Rasmussen comes back the other way. The Wings are trying to exploit it. Rasmussen works it to the right wing. He's all the way in the corner now. Stops, nearly slips. Dania comes over to give pressure. Now it's along the boards for Gomez. Omar squirts out of there to the top of the arc. Leaves it off for Rasmussen. Fires. Geyer knocked it out of there. And Eric Geyer is having some words with the rest of his defensive teammate. A very hot-headed West German. Made the defensive play that time. Now a three-line pass is called. But Steve, you got to like the way the wings are knocking. What a great opportunity on that one. Eric Geyer made a great save to keep that from going in the goal. There's going to be a trainer out on the field now for Alan Mayer. Alan Mayer, incidentally, has a hurt wrist. He's been playing with a heavily tape. The other day in practice, Coach Ron Newman was practicing with the soccer. And uh, he reached over, forgetting about the wrist, and uh, slapped Allen encouragingly on the wrist, and Mayer just grimaced with pain. Later in the newspaper, Newman said, uh, I didn't really mean to hit him in the wrist, I meant to hit him in the face. So, <laughs> Newman with a sense of humor. But Alan Mayer has a very tender wrist on his right hand, and it's been sprained, he's had it taped, he's played magnificently with it. But I'll tell you, Per Rutbed had a wide open shot on that feed from Christensen on the indirect kick. And Rutbed just blasted it, as you know he can. Mayer made a brilliant save, but that ball hit his left wrist, his right wrist there. And this could be the kind of break the Wings needed, as Alan Mayer is 50% of the San Diego defense. And they've already got some defenders hurt. He's going to stay in the game. And I'm sure the trainer probably came out straight to methyl chloride on that, get that uh, wrist frozen up so he doesn't feel the pain. But that could bother him a lot more in the rest of the game and for some games to come. Yeah, they wanted that quick freeze. That quick freeze. That quick freeze. You bet. 12-17 remaining in the third period of action. Two to one. That can definitely take the pain away for a while, but it doesn't last long. And the first good shot you get, that quick freeze does absolutely no good whatsoever. Ball across the red line for Frank Rasmussen as the wings control it. Now to the top of the circle, trying to find Gomez. Rasmussen has to come in to keep it under control. Bourne has it now in the corner. Back to the red line. It's Pedro Runfed. Runfed to trying to get it in for Gomez. is successful. Omar with Julie V and Kaz Dania on him. Gets free. He's open from 15. Leaves off Rasmussen. Fires! And he missed his shot. Had a pretty open net as he just went over the head of Alan Mayer. So the Wings are getting the opportunities, but they're not capitalizing. Now Julie V on the run. Greg Willen not in the ball game. At least not on Julie V. It's v is pushing with Frank Rasmussen. A centering pass for Wilrich. It's struck free. Now the shot by Terry. Dower saves and dives on it, jumping to his right. Quickly, the Wings come on a fast break. Up along the left-hand side. It's Jeff Bourne. Into the attack zone he comes, trying to back up Eric Geyer. Leaves it off for Omar Gomez, who has set a nice little pick for Bourne. But he went by the ball, and with 11-12 remaining, here comes Eric Geyer. Geyer cuts it diagonally for Fernandez. Vidal working against Norman Piper. Man to man on the left wing. They're inside the red line. It's in the corner now for Fernandez. Fernandez takes the pass from Dania. Works it back for Kaz. Jeff Bourne giving him resistance. Now it's at the red line, controlled by Surrey. Works it off to his right for Eric Geyer. Geyer with the right foot sends it diagonally back towards the corner, the near corner for Vidal Fernandez. Fernandez. Sends it right back for Geyer. Stops it with his right foot. Now this time sends it for Dowler, who jumps on it, diving to his right. 10.36. And that's the expertise of a guy like Eric Geyer. Twice he lulled the wings into a false sense of security. Then he passes towards the corner. Then on the third time, he quicks the, or springs a quick shot on Dowler, who had to make a play diving to his right. He's a very good player, very emotional player. He likes to get the crowd pumped up, and he'll be one. He'll be waving his arms after a goal. A good play there. Chapman has it knocked away by Surrey. Surrey bringing the ball to the top of the arc. He's nifty making moves, but Piper comes back to make the play from the back door. Quickly, the ball is distributed along the left-hand board for Andy Chapman. He's on the far side of the floor. Now Norman Piper controls. Back into the middle for John Cutbush. Stops it with his right foot. Now shuttles it ahead. Two lines for Jurgen Christensen. Right back for cuts. He sends it off to his left for Andy Chapman. Just inside the red line, Christensen goes back behind him. And Andy meanders towards the top of the arc. Spits it off for Norman Piper, who sends it to his right. Ron said, one touch back for Piper. He's drifting to his right, and he works it off on a weave with, no, with Kim. Kim across the red line, working to the left corner for Andy Chapman. He tried to go behind Surrey, and now Hiltz makes a bad play. Chapman turns and fires, and it went off the shoulder this time of Alan Mayer, who makes the play. Glances into the far corner. Cutbush hustling after it, but Adi Coker pulls it down. Jurgen Christensen dumps it back for Dowler. 9.24 remaining in a very tense third period of action. Score remains 2-1. to one. 
The wings have controlled the action pretty much, but they haven't been able to break the plane of the net. Christensen's pass intercepted at the red line by Hilkes. Hilkes goes right through the legs of Christensen, but fortunately to Mike Dowler, and with nine minutes remaining, the wings will put it on O again. you got to wonder whether maybe Roy Turner has changed his strategy on Julie B. It's been so effective. Greg Willard no longer apparently marking him man-to-man. -man. Andy Chapman breaking free. Sweeps the shot towards the net. It's blocked away. Christensen gets it back. Yergi on the left wing leaves it off for Kim. His shot, a toe poke, is blocked out of there. Christensen gets it back on the corner, sends it off the plexiglass. Namdar knocks it away from Alan Mayer, but Christensen keeps it alive. Good defense by Jurgen. Namdar takes him to the floor with a trip. 8.40 remaining in the period. Wings will have it back on the floor to the left, or right, excuse me, of goalkeeper Alan Mayer. Jurgen approaches the ball. Hop skipping a jump towards it. Namdar blocks the incoming shot. Kim Lundbeck gets the rebound at the red line. Center of the floor. Works it off to his right for Andy Chapman. Working against Julie V. Julie just trying to reach around the wings forward. And he does it too aggressively. Aggressively, And the call is made by DiPolito. Julie V, one of the most aggressive forwards in this league. 38 penalty minutes in the regular season. Ranked right up there with Omar Gomez, our own aggressive player. <laughs> put into play. Kim Lundbitt makes a good effort to get it away from Sarah, or at least try to. Now the ball comes in for Julie V. Working man-to-man -man against Willen. He got him turned around, sends it towards the corner. Namdar, man free in front of the net. But they couldn't get the ball to him. Now he comes back from 10 feet. Sarah is there with the shot. Follow in by Namdar. Dowler got the kick save. The ball battled away and Dowler finally kick saves it out of there on a centering pass from Cha Cha Namdar. Wings lucky on that one as they very disorganized defensively. Mike Dowler made a nice kick save. San Diego taking advantage of some opportunities there. And the pass to Namdar was just a little bit hard on that first opportunity as they had him wide open to the left at Dowler. Mike can only cover so much space in that goal. The defender's going to have to put that ball away. They can't let those other people, the San Diego Soccer's in that close. Wings affect substitutions. You now have the Omar Gomez line on the floor as Namdar puts the ball into play for Guy Newman, who's played sparingly in the contest. Now he dumps it across into the near boards. Roman goes to the corner for Dania, but Borney knocks it away and leaves it ahead for Greg Willen. Wings have a fast break opportunity. It's spoiled only momentarily by Kaz Dania on a good defensive play. Gomez gets it right back and doesn't lose a stride. He comes across the red line, working towards the corner. Newman takes him down off the ball with a good sliding tackle. It's cleared out of there on a good play by Nico Roman. Jeff Bourne hustling for the ball, and he pushes Newman in the process with 7.41, drawing a whistle from Gino DiPolito. And starting to pick it up. They understand the importance of this ball game, and they know they are in a dogfight with these Wichita Wings who trail 2-1. 7.32 remaining. Nico Roman across midfield. Works it towards the near corner. It's controlled by Adi Coker. Greg Willen comes over to give him a shove. Coker maintains possession. Willen took him to the floor with a good kick. And the call is made. Coker enhanced it a little bit, but Greg did whack him. Soccers have not lost an indoor playoff game in two years. Six straight last year, three straight this year, nine in a row. They've won eight in a row, the longest in the franchise's history, and their current winning streak... Last loss was at Kansas City a month ago. Oz Daniel works it off. Shot coming in from Roman. Goes wide to the right. Comes bounding out on the rebound to Cha-Cha Namdar on the far corner. Makes a nice move to get around Fair Runfit. Now Rasmussen coming over to give help. Namdar is bottled in by two white shirts, and the wings aggressively knock the ball away. Ball is still free, however, in the corner. Now it's finally knocked out of there by Newman. Ball is in the corner. It hits the post and bounds out of there. The wings dodge a big bullet right there as they luck out, and San Diego is turned away. As Terry Nichol would call it, the rub of the green was on the wing side that time, and the wings will have it instead at the midfield, trailing 2-1 to one instead of 3-1. to one. Omar Gomez across the red line, dumps it in for Jeff Bourne. He had Guy Newman going the other way, chips it towards the corner. Norman Piper sends a shot off the plexiglass wide to the left. Comes bounding back out to the red line for Pear Runfed with a left foot. Scoots it ahead for Cutbush, who distributes it towards the corner. Borney takes it off his right foot. Stops, circles the ball towards the top of the arc. Piper sets it, sends it back for Gomez on the left board. One touch back for Pear Runfed, and Pear has to retreat into the midfield to make the play. Now he leaves it off for Cut. John Cutbush to the top of the arc, trying to find Jeff Bourne. He's pushed in there by Guy Newman. Call is made by Gino DiPolito with 6.17 remaining in the period, pushing against Guy Newman. 2-1, to one, the wings trail. Newman, the coach's son, of course, the only one I know of in the MISL, playing for his father. 
Omar Gomez sends it towards the corner for Jeff Bourne. He tried a little chipper for Omar, but Omar didn't follow the ball. Now a dangerous play is going to be called. And the Wings will hustle back on defense. Jeff Bourne laughing at Gino DiPolito. Gino laughing back. I wonder if perhaps Borny, who's famous for his wit even in the middle of a game, didn't make a caustic remark at Gino that Gino took in the right light. <laughs> Borny is possessed of a great wit. There's no doubt about that. Hilk is with the ball, working against Terry Nickel, who's in the game for the first time, as obviously Roy Turner went to the substitution that you suggested in the first half, Steve Schott. 5.54 remaining as Rasmussen has sat down. Borney with the ball, works it back for Norman Piper. And the lines are a little mixed up right now. Rontbed with the ball at the red line. Wings trying to get everybody onto the right line. Now it's V knocking it away, working against Willen to get them turned around. Now gets them to the corner, working in with the shot. Dowler saves and driving in there with Vilkas, who went right up over the head of Mike Dowler on a nifty athletic effort just to avoid the Wings goalkeeper. And with 5.22, Wings come back on offense. All of a sudden, it's San Diego, Steve, that's starting to garner the momentum and control the opportunities, but it's been a stalemate in the third period. Wichita finally has their starting line on with Chapman, Piper, Christensen. Check that. That's Terry Nickel out there instead of Christensen. Well, maybe Rasmussen will stay in the game. Perhaps there's something wrong with Christensen as Norman Piper just boots at it at the red line. Then finally, Terry Nickel comes up with it. Sweeps it off his right for Piper. Sends it right back for Nickel. Now to the left, Greg Willen. Wings work into the midfield now with Andy Chapman. Chapman across the red line, working into the attack zone, trying to back up Terry. Now makes a move to his left, working towards the corner. Comes back the other way, and he sends it back for the midfield for Greg Willen. Willen at the midfield strike. Works it off to his right, Gomar Gomez. Inside the red line, he tries to go right by Kaz Daniel, but Pena obstructs. It was just one of those things where both players were going in the same direction at the same time. Fans don't like it, but that is as blatant of obstruction as we've ever seen. Fans would like to see Omar called for the charging foul. And really, both players just moved the same way. No uh, intent to collide on that one at all. Gomez sends it towards the corner. Chapman tried to shuttle it for Piper. The play does not work. Alan Mayer knocks it away. It comes to mid four where Kim Rutherford gets it. Put on it, sends it off for John Cutbush, who heads it for Mike Dowdle with 420 remaining. And it's been a scoreless third period, but great entertaining action. Wings lines are really uh, adjusted here. Roy Turner is trying to go for a different combination, apparently. Omar Gomez comes in with an opportunity from Andy Chapman, and the ball is booted up into the stand. Interesting because the Wings have been able to control the offensive tempo early on in this period, really getting some good opportunities, just knock, knock, knocking on the door instead of breaking it down. You've got to wonder exactly what the method to Roy's madness is in changing up these lines, unless there has been an injury to either Jurgen Christensen, well, to Jurgen Christensen, period. He would be the only one because he is not on a regular shift right now. And Chapman Bourne and Rasmussen in the game, along with Willen and Kim Rutbed. Taken away from Rasmussen on the left wing by Dania. His shot. Score! That was inexcusable right there, I'll tell you. Rasmussen got the ball taken away at mid floor. Dania just took it down, gave the wings a clinic. Clean and simple. Dowler is beaten by the crafty veteran, as was Rasmussen in the wing. 3.52 remaining in the third period. A very pivotal goal indeed at San Diego. Now leads 3 to 1. Six remaining in the game. It's not out of control by any stretch of the imagination, but they do trail by two, three to one. As tight as San Diego has been playing defensively, the Wings are going to have to get something going here as Wichita has not scored since 10.51 of the first period. 
Can run fed across midfield to the red line, working to the top of the arc, holding a man off with his right hand. Fernandez shot comes in off of Rasmussen's foot, but the ball is knocked away. Then he comes back, knocking Terry to the floor, and Frank's going to get two minutes. Bad call. Frank aggressively went for the ball, but he got the man. Jurgen Christensen is going over, and this is exactly what the wings don't need. Somebody's got to get right in Jurgen Christensen's face and get him back to the bench and have him shut up. Gino DiPolito doesn't need to yell back at Jorgen here. As they are just exchanging words with each other. Gino would be much better off if he just closed his mouth as well. And that's a common criticism of Gino. is just running conversations with players. Jorgen Christensen undoubtedly criticizing him. And as a person, you couldn't blame an official for calling back. But as an official, he doesn't need to say a thing to Jorgen Christensen except please get out of the way. Well, a very... Poorly timed penalty as most are. This one to Frank Rasmussen, who very much knows what the saying of when it rains it pours means after this ball game tonight. San Diego in the power play situation. The shot comes right in off of Julie V, and it's saved brilliantly in there by Stevie Westbrook and Mike Dowler. Ball dumped back to midfield. The wings on penalty killing unit have fair run fit. Norman Piper, Steve Westbrook, Tony Pesnecker. 235 remaining. As Wilrich boots it towards the net, the ball is just up over the top of the crossbar and hit the plexiglass beyond it. Ball comes back to mid floor. Fernandez jumps it toward Dowler who picks it up and will put the ball back into play for the wings with a minute 20 remaining. Loops it high in the air. Ball's going to come down towards the red line but Wilrich keeps it from doing so. It's controlled by Fernandez. Jumps it to the top of the arc. Ade Coker. The right wing. Controlled by Dania. Dania has V just to his left. Instead goes to the top of the arc to the right wing. Wilrich turns it back on the near side. It's controlled by Dania. Back towards Wilrich. Fernandez in the corner. Fair run that plays him off the board. Hard. And a push is called against Fernandez. Oh, that's incredible. Fair run that just beat him to the board. Oh, man, oh, man. Wings lucked out that time. Fair just booted him to the board. Says it's a midfield, and San Diego comes back on the attack. Cause Dean hit the point. Be wide open out to the side. Wilrich trying to get it there, but it's knocked out of there by Pear Runfed. Norman Piper makes the play, sends it off to the left for Pear. 40 seconds remain in the penalty. Pear tries to dump it ahead for Piper, who is streaking into the attack zone, but now San Diego comes back with it. Cos Dania at the red line, working it in towards the corner. V is there, turns out. He's free in front of the net, but Pear Runfed knocks it away for Norman Piper, who sends it with a left foot to mid floor. Alan Mayer comes in with a right foot to send it back into play. 22 seconds left in the man advantage. To the top of the arc, Cos Dania works it to the corner. Julie V centering pass. Great save by Dowler off a shot by Fernandez. Another follow. Dowler gets his hand on a Coker score. Adi Coker scores. Coker hit that one in with his arm. It had never been a goal. Hoping that as a criticism of the officials would have been very hard to see. But he was right in close range. But he hit that one with his arm, and Mike Dowler could do nothing. remain in a third period that has seen San Diego blow the game open. Leading at halftime, 2-1. to one. They've extended that to 4-1. to one. The game, not so much three goals is not so large a differential, but the Wichita Wings have been unable to score since about midway through the first quarter. And just as San Diego stifled the Wings in the second half last night, they're doing it right now. 
Frank Rasmussen has this pass intercepted by Cha-Cha Namdar, hustling after it. He breaks it free. Now driving in along the right-hand side. He has a man open in the net, tries to get it there, but it's knocked out of there again. The wings just are waiting too long to get the passes going. Namdar controlling it at midfield, across the red line into the attack zone, tries to go by Greg Woolen, but the ball is going to be into the waiting foot of Dowler, who boots it right back for Frank. Frank Rasmussen ahead for Jeff Bourne, who boots it towards the net. Alan Mayer makes the play, doubling over it, as time has expired in a third period that may well signal the end of the wing. Chances here at San Diego, as this crowd of nearly 12,500 rise to their feet. Four to one at the end of three. the sports arena in San Diego, the Wichita Wings. Coming out at the beginning of a half, playing extremely well, but since then have been hopelessly outplayed by the San Diego Sockers who lead going into the fourth and final period, four to one. Steve Shaw tells you how he got there. Costanio won a 50-50 ball from Frank Rasmussen on an outlet pass from Alan Mayer. Instead of playing Ras uh, instead of playing Dania cautiously, Rasmussen went for the interception. Dania won it out and went down unopposed. Got a great shot off against Mike Dowler. No fault of Dowler on that one. To put the Sockers up 3-1, to 11.08 into the period. Then just 52 seconds later, Rasmussen got called for tripping. And that gave San Diego a power play. They scored on a goal by Aldi Coker from Vidal Fernandez. A man advantage goal at 13.47. Now breaking in free was Julie V, but Greg Willen, ever present, makes the defensive play. And through it all, my hat goes off to that young man. He has played tremendously, as have other wings, but certainly he has drawn the most difficult task defensively. Andy Chapman to the top of the arc for Jurgen Christensen. He tries to send it back into the corner. Newman goes hard into the boards. Andy Chapman gave him a little bit of help with a shoulder rolled into him, and Newman effectively acted out the rest and got the ball back for San Diego. Wilrich dumps it towards the left-hand corner, trying to find Julie V. Willen plays him off again, and it's controlled by Norman Piper. Jurgen Christensen back into the middle for Kim Runfit, backing up Todd Zane to the red line. Kim trying to stay on him, works it to the left wing for Christensen. Jurgen makes a free move, drives in there, but a great sliding tackle by Newman sends Christensen to the floor. Kim staying on it. Newman comes down and knocks him to the floor, and the push is made. Christensen is complaining with DiPolito right now about a two-minute violation. The only card that will come out right now would be for descent from Jurgen. Wings at least have a set play, and look for a run bed open there on the left of Jorgen Christensen. Off the board, the ball goes, trying to dump it instead to someone out in front. It goes off to the left of goalkeeper Mayor Wilrich makes the play routinely head to Dania. Back into the middle for Wilrich, who receives the most unheralded player on this club. He is truly a great player. With all these superstars around him, you don't notice him as much. He loses it away this time from Kim Rontbed. Kim shoots it into the middle for Andy Chabin. Wings need to score quickly and frequently in this period. Jurgen Christensen from 28 feet, working to the left, drives it in. He's near the goal, but dumps it off in front. Mayer makes the play. Allen comes to the head, two lines for Adek Coker. Battling against him, John Cutbush. Fernandez coming off the bench, makes the play, scoots it ahead. Norman Piper dumps it back into the attack zone. Andy Chapman controls it, but his pass for Piper is intercepted by Fernandez, who makes a nice play in the middle to keep it away from Piper. Now across the midfield circle, he comes to the red line, moving to the top of the arc, driving around. He turns to his right. Cutbush staying with him, check man for man. Works it up to the right for Daniel, who's open. Fire! He had every right to score, but the ball glanced up high at the plexiglass above the net and came back to the red line where the wings retrieve. The wings need to dominate offensively. They're going to have to take some chances. 12.50 left in the game, and they haven't scored for over 30 minutes now, almost 45 minutes. They trail by the same deficit that they lost the other night here. 8-5 to five, the final of that game, 4-1 to one now, as John Cutbush brings the ball up to the on the right-hand side for Omar Gomez. They're at midfield, across the midfield stripe for Jeff Bourne, back for Gomez. Gomez in front of the San Diego bench. Pair run bench to his right, directing traffic. The ball goes into the middle for Frank Rasmussen. Frank works it off to his left for Pair run bed. Now for Jeff Bourne. Bourne in the corner is free. Ball goes off the board. Didn't get a good bounce. Rasmussen whipped at it and put it up in the stand. Interesting numbers all against the Wings, the Wichita Wings. Only 4-20 when they go into the fourth quarter trailing. 
And they've only come back from a three-goal deficit three times this year to win. But one of those was against Kansas City when they trailed 7-4 to four and won it 8-7. to seven. And all that in the fourth quarter. So the Wichita Wings... They ain't playing the Kansas City Comets right now, though. <laughs> the good news is, though, that San Diego is a team who gets complacent with a lead occasionally, and they're vulnerable. They've given up some leads this season. Last time we saw them lose, in fact, the last time they lost, they blew a three-goal lead to Phoenix in the last five minutes of the game. Julie V again has the ball knocked away by Greg Willen as he was battling for control with Horn and Willen. Wings get it back in the midfield, and it's controlled by Gomez. Omar to the top of the circle for Jeff Horn. Works it off to the wing, Rue Rasmussen. Leaves it on for Pera Runfit. His blistering shot just glances off wide. Goes into the corner. Jeff Bourne controlling it, battling against Collier. Bourne dumps it back for Gomez. Gomez across the top of the arc for Rasmussen. Stops it, plays it with his right foot. Back for Willen. Willen stops, put atop the ball. Looking for someone to pass to. Goes to the top of the arc. It's Rasmussen, or Runfit. Now back for Willen. Willen controls it to the top of the arc. Bourne is knocked off his feet. Again, complains to the officials. It does no good. Collier made a good defensive play. The ball comes out to mid-floor. It's controlled by Julie V. Working against Greg Willen. Makes a nifty move. Up against the board. Working towards the center. Willen is with him. Man to man. All out of shadow. Now it's Namdar at the red line. Back for Julie V. V works it off to the right. Namdar is there. Fires. Dowler out of net. Fernandez gets the play. Chips it in front for V. And the ball is played away. As a matter of fact, Rasmussen made a good defensive play right there turning his hip into V, and thus throwing him off his flight. V just misses the header, but the fans like it anyway. Omar Gomez comes driving in, perhaps trying to take up the slack for everyone else by himself, and the ball is played away. Cha-Cha Namdar controls as the San Diego 4-1 with 10.35 remaining. Gary Collier dumps it across the red line into the attack zone. Pair runs it, knocks it away as the theme from Rocky fills up the sports arena. Norman Piper directing traffic. The wing's a little frantic right now as Chapman comes in to the attack zone, taking the pass off the board from Piper. Now at the top of the arc, man to man against Collier. Now he's facing the net. This is where he's effective. He fires, and Mayer saves, diving off to his left. But you can see the difference when Andy Chapman faces the goal against this club as opposed to when he's got a back in on it. Ade Coker now on the right wing. Off a quick distribution from Mayer. Gives it to Namdar, who boots it up in off high on the plexiglass. Comes bounding down for Kim Runfed in the wing's control, 9.51 remaining, and time is running short. Norman Piper at the midfield circle for Jurgen Christensen. Christensen can't get by Costanya, but Dania can't get by Runfed. Runfed makes the play, driving it in. His shot deflected and controlled by Collier. Alan Mayer makes the play, picks it up with his right hand, shuttles it forward for Fernandez. Fernandez breaking in, makes a great move to get by Christensen. Sends it to the right wing for Julie V. Norman Piper on him. Good Lord, what a mismatch. Into the corner it goes for Fernandez. Dower makes the play. Dania gets it back. He fires Dower again, diving to the right. A follow-up in the corner on a blistering shot by Dania. And it glances wide again. Into the far corner for Nico Roman. Man to man against Kim Hunter. The ball is sent towards the arc. Dania suits it in. Shot coming from Roman as Dania let it off. And Cutbush made the play in front of the net. With 9.04 remaining, San Diego is continuing to put the pressure on, and the Wings have yet to respond in their own offensive end. This is where the San Diego Sockers were vulnerable the other night, pushing forward and not getting back on defense. The difference is they're, they're covering their defense pretty well, as they've got Terry Palomara back to stop any Wings fast break. Willen sends V to the floor. Ball comes bounding out to the top of the arc, but V gets it right back from Rasmussen. Frank hustling after it. Never afraid, always honest. He may not be having one of his better nights tonight in a Wings uniform, but he is never, ever wanting for any type of effort. Now they're complaining that V threw an elbow. Julie V showing Frank Rasmussen the ball, as if to say, kick the ball, Frank, kick the ball. And Frank Rasmussen saying, hey, keep your elbow out of my chin. Willen battling for Eric Geyer with, for possession. Terry comes out with it, top of the arc. He's got the avenue, Dowler save. Mike Deller rocks back on that shot. A good save. Holding his call against Julie V as he was backing in on Greg Willen. Greg Willen has done a good job drawing fouls against Julie V. V's got to be the most snake bitten player against the referees, but he hasn't been called for a penalty yet in the playoffs. Willen's winning the battle. San Diego's winning the war. Ade Coker drives across the red line. Runfett plays him off the ball. He and Fernandez battling for it along the boards. Kim comes up with it. Kim's had another good aggressive night. Tough defender. 
It is off Randy Chapman, top of the arc, facing the net, fires and hits the post, and Mayer propels it back into the corner on the rebound with 8-10 remaining. And the ball comes in for Eric Geyer. Geyer battling against Runbed. Runbed sends him to the floor. No two minutes. Eric is hot. Kim sent him spiraling. Geyer gets up, and a play will be made by San Diego. Fernandez gets up by Rasmussen, fires. Hilkes hits the post, drops the shot in the middle, and it's knocked away. Wings come on the attack, never giving up. Gomez, that's midfield. Comes it to the top of the arc. He's free, fires, trying to hit Bourne on the weak side, and it's a handball against Jeff Bourne. Good call. Had it right on the scopes, and it was a good call. He took it off the boards on his hand. It also hit Geyer in the hand, but after it, he hit Jeff Bourne. 7.45 remains. Wings need a break. The series is going to go back to Wichita for a game Friday, May 6th. About 500 tickets remain for that game, incidentally, and we would suggest the Wings office is not open tomorrow, but it will be open at 9 o'clock Monday. If you want a ticket for that game, best thing to do is to go right on down to the Wings office, 114 South Broadway, Monday at 9. Wilrich takes a pass from V, working against Rasmussen Frank with his best defensive play of the evening, knocks it away from Wilrich and sends the Wings on offense. 7.17 remaining, and big pair of run fit. Has it in the defensive third. Steady always as a defender. A true rock in that defensive third. Leaves it off for Terry Nichol, who's played sparingly ahead for Jeff Warren, who turns on an axis, fires, but the ball's knocked out of there, and San Diego is frustrating the wings at every turn. Gene Wilrich at mid-floor, driving the ball ahead. Julie B. tips it into the middle. Willen plays him off the ball. Siri comes over to keep it alive. It's on the far boards, into the corner. Siri is there. Siri working towards the net, centering for B. Willen knocks it away. Wilrich gets it away, sends it towards the corner. Namdar wide open, leaves it in the middle for V. Knocked out of there by Terry Nickel. Wilrich comes sliding in, and the ball is in the corner. Wings can't get a position, a possession right now as Siri takes it back into the midfield. Newman with the ball. He boots it up into the stands. Last touch by Jeff Bourne, however. 6.31 remaining. Time very much on the side of the Sockers who threatened to take a 2 to nothing lead in this best-of-five semifinal series. they got time on their side, and they've been controlling possession. The Wichita Wings, who looked very equal to the San Diego Sockers through most of the game, have been outplayed in the last half as they've made two crucial mistakes that led to goals, and San Diego gets that big lead. Very tough. Attendance tonight, 11,520, and I don't see where there's that many empty seats in this place, but I'll take their word for it. Pretty honest group down here. Mayer boots it up into the stands, and that's about as poor a thing as I've ever seen him do. He had the ball in control, and with 6.15 remaining and trailing 4-1, to the Wings will have to start putting in their last gas preference. Incidentally, playoff game number four, if necessary will be Sunday, May 8th at the Kansas Coliseum. A lot of tickets still available for that one, about 4,000. Ball into play from Omar Gomez for Jeff Bourne. Turns, fires on Mayer, who makes the save again. Jeff Bourne having more success with his back to the net than Andy Chapman, but nonetheless unable to score. Gomez battling with Tanya. Call is made against Omar. Julie V gets it, but Gino DiPolito who may have been watching that game the other night from some vantage point, is not allowing these players to get away with the quick spots this evening. V puts it into play. Gomez knocks it away, sends it back to mid-floor. Dangerous play against Vidal Fernandez, who's just having a good laugh down there. Wings need to get something together quickly. A goal in the next minute or two is crucial. Wichita trailing in the series one to nothing, and down in this one, if they would go down two to nothing, no matter how well they play in the Kansas Coliseum, the odds are stacked against them against the San Diego club that's won eight in a row. You gotta think the Wings would have a good chance of winning two in the Coliseum, but they haven't had much luck here in San Diego. Chapman through the legs of Siri. Siri makes a good recovery and Coker backs it in to Mayer. 539 remaining as Mayer dumps it off along the left-hand boards. Pair Runbed gets it back to Dowler, who picks it up on two bounces, rolls it off to his left. the middle of the floor. John Cutbush leaves it off for pair run bed. Right back for Cuts. Right foot atop it. Works the ball in the middle. It's controlled by Norman Piper. Piper dumps it across the red line for Rasmussen. Back into the middle. Run bed controlling. He loops it towards the corner. It's going to go off the plexiglass. Piper gets to it as it went over the head of Dania. Back into the midfield. Cutbush control. Fan sense of victory and with good reason. Five minutes remaining. Their club leads by three. Piper to the top of the arc. Chapman heads it off into the right-hand corner for Kim Runfit, battling against Siri. Runfit with the ball. 
Working in, now two blue shirts are over there. He finally cuts it free, but Newman is there to make the play, and here comes Guy Newman. Newman stops it at the defensive red line, circles around it, and sends it for Siri. Newman hustles off the floor. San Diego changes on the fly, 4.42 remaining. And San Diego is on the verge of taking a two-goal or two-game lead in this best-of-five series. Into the corner for Wilrich. Rasmussen circles around him and makes a good play to knock it away for John Cutbush ahead for Andy Chapman. Chapman at the red line works it into midfield. At the midfield circle, he boots it towards the corner. Rasmussen is there, but Ade Coker is as well. Frank makes a good play. Coker trips him off his feet. Chapman retrieves, but the ball is finally knocked away by Gene Wilrich and controlled by Nico Roman. Works it off to his right for Kazdania. Kim Ruffett hustling after it. And now we have a whistle on the play, and we have a man down. Or at least Andy Chapman was apparently injured for a moment. Now Gino DiPolito, who had whistled the ball dead because of he thought there was an injury to Chapman. Checks. Andy appears though to be okay. Andy limping a little bit. Looks like he might have taken a kick to the ankle or maybe twisted it a little. Pretty tough young man. Hasn't had too many serious injuries his career with the wings. He's played in every regular season game. He's played in every playoff game. For Coach Young, and that makes a big difference. He has a tremendous desire to succeed. He does it perhaps in a bit of more, in a bit, bit less obtrusive way than some of the others. As the drop ball and suing the dead ball situation. by San Diego. Hilke is working on the right wing. Fires. The ball is deflected away by Runfed. Kim controlling it. Makes a nice move to get by Wilrich, who's got turned around every which way, but loose. 347 remaining. Wings trail 4-1. to one. Need to get something going very quickly or this game's going to be all over. Does not appear to be in the cards at this point as Wilrich comes in uncontested. Top of the arc. Works it off to his left. Rade Coker. John Tepush comes over to cut down the distance, and Ade sends it off for Gene Wilrich. Works it off for Hilkins, now Coker. Christensen on the defensive play. Knocks it away, and Kim Runford gets it back. Coker's going to get called for a dangerous play. With 321 remaining, Wings have not been con as convincing in this game, Steve, as they were the other night. San Diego, I think, has really taken over, except for two separate occasions of the game. Now a timeout is being called by the Wings, and I think that they've really vented their superiority. And it's very obvious in the fact that the Wings have been outscored in this series in two games by six goals. San Diego just may be the better club. I think I think uh, it's tough to argue with that logic. As we talked earlier, they play the two teams have similar talent. The two teams play a very similar style. And as the newspapers have said here, San Diego respects the heck out of the Wichita Wings, but they've also just been beating them every time. Sure. And I think the case is. San Diego makes fewer mistakes. I don't know that they're a better club. If you just had to, to watch them play soccer, and, right. and you wouldn't necessarily say, well, this club's way better than the other one. But San Diego, I cannot remember making very few mistakes. And Wichita has made just enough mistakes to give the soccer a couple of goals tonight, and that's the difference in the game. Incidentally, we talked about those playoff tickets for game four, which would be Sunday. The next game in this series will be Friday. Time has been changed back to 7.35 at the Kansas Coliseum. If the Wings should lose tonight, then Friday will be a do-or-die situation for Wichita in this best three out of five series. Here, Rutfed putting on the goalkeeper jersey. A new one here is the first time Pear has ever played in goal. I'll tell you, not a bad idea. As he's a player who can really threaten with that left foot of his. We're talking about Sunday's game, still plenty of tickets left. And unless you want to wait in line on Saturday morning, or unless you just don't think the Wings have any chance of winning Friday night, I would suggest go ahead and get a ticket for Sunday's game. If the game should not be played, if Wichita should lose these next two tonight and Friday, you'll get your money back in full, and you'll have plenty of time to go down to the Wings office and refund them. So rather than wait in line on Saturday morning, I just want to get them. They're available at all Wings Chicken Alley. Desperation tactics in the employ of the Wichita Wings. Per Runfed is the goalie. Works it off to his right for brother Kim. He whips the shot. Mayer knocks it away. It was high anyway. Comes around spiraling off to Christensen. Now Per Runfed's going to get it. Mayer saves. Ball bounced to the corner. Namdar clears the way to the red line. Per keeps it into play with that powerful left foot poise. Sends it back for Kim. Equally as powerful a right foot. Back for Per to the left. On the wing, Christensen. Born in front as is Gomez. Piper on the right side. It has not gotten to Norman yet. Pair with another blast, and it's headed away by Gary Collier. 
You may be pulling for the Anderson bottle a couple times tonight. His pair definitely had some velocity on that shot. 239 remaining here. And the Wings trail 4-1. to one. San Diego's been vulnerable on the six attacker situations, although blowing a three-goal lead in the last 240 might be too much even for Wings fans to hope for. Kim Runfed had the volley shot off a skipping pass from Jurgen Christensen on the corner kick. And he boots it up over the plexiglass. Key change of possession right there. San Diego's going to have some time to run some seconds off the clock and against the goalkeeper that hasn't played in goal all season long, Kerr Runfed. Here's Gary Collier into the midfield. Working with his right foot. Sends it off diagonally across the red line. Namdar has it knocked away by, Jurg or by Kim Runfed and Jurgen controls now with 2.25 remaining. Kim Runfed leaves it off for Piper on the far board. Back for Pear Runfed with the left foot. Scoops it ahead. For Christensen, into Gomez, one touch for Kim. Kim setting the ball, stops it. V comes over to give pressure. Pear stops it with his left foot, fakes the shot. Now looking for someone to pass to, sends it in the corner. Christensen, back for Pear, Runfed. Time is wasting away, 2.05. Wings have three to make up. Kim Runfed going to the top of the arc. Pear's going to blast in there. Namdar blocked it away. Christensen gets it back to the top of the arc. Here's Julie V. Potential goal scoring situation. V works it ahead for Namdar, but Pear Runfed knocks it away. For Jurgen Christensen, ball is down, and Chacha just holds on to it, and the call is made. Dangerous play. 146 remaining. Wings trail as the fans make it away to the exit. Across the red line, Kim Runfed works it off for Omar Gomez. Gomez with a centering pass. Oh, shot and a score! Went in off of the defender, number 11, Fernandez. And the Wichita Wings. A little bit of breath there, four to two. San Diego crowd's gonna stand up and cheer their soccer's on. You'd have to have a miracle for the Wichita Wings to have a comeback in the last two minutes. Stranger things have happened. Incidentally, the Wichita Wings team returns around nine o'clock on Continental Airlines out of Denver. That's the connection tomorrow evening. And I'm sure the players will get a big boost out of a lot of fans out there. Let them know they're still behind them. Pear Runfed comes out to make a play from a streaking Gene Woolrich. Omar Gomez gets it back into the midfield, centers it off for Jurgen Christensen. Now it's Pear Runfed with the left foot. A minute 23, he sweeps it to his right for Kim Runfed. Now Kim sets it up, takes the shot. Mayer makes the save and nearly bounced in off his back. Gomez couldn't get the follow. Jerry makes the play. Battling shot in there by Runfed is just goes right by Jeff Bourne. Ball is now possessed by San Diego. Into the midfield, it's Willis. Pear Runfed hustling back towards the net. Coker has it towards the corner. Kim tries to play him off the ball, and Pear will pick it up. Pear with the left hand. He looks like the snake on that. Kenny Stabler whips it ahead to midfield, but Coker gets it back again, and that may just about be it, unless the Wings can get it back quickly. Siri makes the play. Bourne tries to knock it away. Christensen maintains possession. Coker goes hard into him, sending a hip. Now Jurgen just trying to get the ball. Coker is knocked to the floor again. Shurgan having some words with Popovic. 45 seconds remain. Wings go looking for the desperation goal to make it four to three and then a miracle to tie it up. Christensen sweeps it to the top of the arc, goes right around the horn for Fernandez. He's across the red line, here's the shot. It's wide, follow Nambar, no, a run bed, it boots it up into the stand. He's tried to gain, maintain possession, will be a corner kick coming. But the crying, I'm afraid, for the Wichita Wings. And they've got a monumental task ahead of them to try to win three straight against the San Diego soccer team that have won eight in a row if Wichita's going to try and make it to the final. Amdar works it off for Julie V, who's trying to save face by scoring a goal, and V pushes off Bourne to the ball. Against Greg Willen, he has a goal and an assist. He has an assist tonight, but Willen was not on the floor when that happened. As we said earlier, San Diego's winning the war. Gomez, left wing, Christensen works it off Gomez. His shot wide, Piper boots it up over the stand. 20 seconds remaining. I think the difference in this game is those two goals late in the third period. Dania, after stealing a 50-50 ball, and then a man advantage goal by Coker. That's the difference on the scoreboard. Two goals, and I think those two mistakes caused a, big, a loss for the Wichita Wings tonight. It, Seems unfortunate that just two mistakes in a game, and really the Wings have played pretty well, although I've seen them play better soccer. Oh, indeed. Willie V now breaking in free. Nobody's in the net. V's going to get one. Nope, Daniel. So the Wings now humbled a bit. Fox is 
two is going to be the final score. And you got to give it to the San Diego club. We said earlier in the year that Chicago, when they were clicking, were the best team in the league. I'm going to amend that to say San Diego is better. But I'm also going to take my hat off to the teams in the NASL. The two teams in particular, Chicago and San Diego. Golden Bay, not so much a factor. But Chicago and San Diego certainly proved to me anyway, Steve Shaw, that they very much belonged in the MISL. And in fact, they almost ended up controlling it. Certainly have. San Diego is not the flashiest team in the league. I think Chicago is. But San Diego, the most solid team. They just don't make mistakes, and they capitalize on other teams' mistakes. But I tell you... Dania, Julie V, a couple of the top players in the MISL in my book. Gomez will get the last chance. Here, Runfed will get it. Hits the post, bounds out of there, and that's it. San Diego has taken a 2 to nothing lead in the best of five semifinal series by beating the Wings fairly convincingly here at the Sports Arena. Final tally, 5-2. to two. And I'd rather be climbing Mount Everest when I come home this weekend. Northeast Wichita, you'll have all the banking services you'll ever need. Right in your... They're going to need all the help they can get. Alan Mayer selected the number one star of this game and the MVP of the MISL this year. Well, San Diego did their job, Joe. They had to win both games here at the sports arena to really take advantage of that home field advantage, and they did just that. And they are a red-hot team. They have now won 10 straight games in the playoffs. Well, the Wings, as Joe said, are going to need your support. And as Dorothy said in The Wizard of Oz, there's no place like home. And the Wings return to the land of Oz, Kansas, and we'll see what happens next Friday night back in the friendly confines of the Kansas Coliseum. Stay tuned next on KSN for Saturday Night Live. Tonight's game was brought to you by Anheuser-Busch, the makers of Budweiser and Budweiser Light. By your Wichita Coca-Cola bottler, Coke is it. Mid Kansas Federal Savings and Loan Association with 19 convenient locations. And by McDonald's Restaurant. Together, McDonald's and you. The executive producer of KSN Sports is Leon Cap. Tonight's game produced and directed by Casey Spangler. And I'd also like to thank the fine crew out here in San Diego for a job well done. Thanks also to Dick Christman of the Suckers and Steve John of the Wing. For Joe Howard, this is Dave Armstrong saying so long from the sports arena in San Diego. California. Once again, our final score, San Diego 5, Wichita 2. This has been a KSN Sports presentation.